Mikel Arteta's Arsenal have lost their first game since the 1st of January as Jurgen Klopp's title contender Liverpool came to the Emirates, scored two goals and took all three points. But where did it all go wrong for Arsenal? Who are still the Arsenal positive standout players? And what could have Mikel Arteta done tactically? Well as per, don't forget to smash a like if you enjoy and subscribe if you are new. And here are the five things that we learnt from Arsenal nil Liverpool 2. First things first is superstar Gabriel Martinelli. Now I can easily get straight into the negatives and every time Arsenal lose a game every fan wants to go negative and oh my god this is and that but I want to start off with a shining light for this game. An Arsenal player that really stood out that took it to Liverpool and showed signs of becoming a potential superstar and that my friends is Pelé Scott and Gabriel Martinelli for me by far the Arsenal man in the match and even looking at stats 100% take on success, 6 touches in the opposition box, 6 time possession won, 4 passes into the opposition box, 4 duels won, 3 take-ons completed, 2 clearances, 2 crosses, 1 chance created and also 1 shot as well. It was a near world class performance in Gabriel Martinelli and the reason why I say world class is because even though he didn't score a goal or get an assist, looking at the players he's up against, forget Trent alexander arnold Virgil van Dijk, Joel Matip, Fabinho, some of the best players within the Premier League, players that are fighting for Premier League titles and Gabriel Martinelli was not phased. Some of the runs, the skills, the flicks, the nutmegs, it was violation after violation. There was a reason why in 2019, Jurgen Klopp came out and called Gabriel Martinelli the talent of the century and even after tonight as Klopp said, Martinelli is such a talented boy. There was times where I felt sorry for Trent alexander Aldridge because every single time Martinelli got the ball, you just knew he was going to violate and there was no mercy shown by Martinelli. And Trent's a world class player by the way so the fact that he's doing that shows the levels of Gabriel Martinelli. And going into the future my Arthur fans, make no mistake, we have a superstar in the making, whether it's out wide as a winger, as a centre forward hopefully all at Arsenal Football Club. So even though it was not the result that many Arsenal fans wanted tonight, I will still say for me, our man of the match was our best player was Gabriel Martinelli. But what did you guys make of Gabriel Martinelli's performance and do you see signs of a special special player? Moving on to the second thing and that is a game lost in 10 minutes. This was a game where Arsenal weren't poor. I can't come out and say Arsenal was so so bad today and it was tactically awful and Arteta got it wrong and the players got it wrong. In that first off, Arsenal once again displayed tactically and structurally if they want to and when they can they can go toe to toe with the best teams in the Premier League. But football of course is a game of 90 minutes not 45 and that second half I wouldn't come out and say Arsenal were completely awful and stunky out but it was that 10 minute period at the start of the second half where Arsenal had their best chance the first big chance of the game Martin Odegaard should have scored and Liverpool go and score two goals from Arsenal mistakes that's where Arsenal lost this game. And even Mikel Arteta after the game says I don't think the result reflects the performance of the team. In many moments we were the better team. The way the boys performed showed their courage they really raised the level today. And even if you look at the stats overall, it was only a 0.05 difference in terms of the expected goals. The shots are very similar, possessions pretty even, the passes are completed, Arsenal had more final third entries and also had more successful dribbles. Looking at the stats there, that was an even game. Arsenal not first off were a better team and for the majority of the game, Arsenal were a better team. And if you want to be a big team competing for the biggest of titles, you have to remain switched on from minute 1 to minute 90. So looking at the way the Arsenal team fell apart from Ramsdale's mistake from the first goal and the second goal, Bukayo Saka poor clearance and the poor defending as well. Those are the fine, fine margins upon where Arsenal lost this game and when you're up against an elite team at like Liverpool, you can't make any single mistake. But as Gary Lineker tweeted after the game, Arsenal may have lost but they're heading in the right direction under Arteta, no doubt. I'm going to see a lot of fans saying, Babs, against the big teams, Arsenal can't lay a glove but in the last two games against the big teams, Man City and Liverpool in the Premier League, with our fully fit first 11s or there and thereabouts, Arsenal have competed. And these are the two teams, not just the best in the Premier League, these are the best teams in Europe. So if Arsenal were to get into the Champions League, if we're shown that we can compete with the best teams in the world, with a couple more pieces added to this jigsaw, with the youngest team in the Premier League getting more and more experience, why can't this Arsenal team under Mikel Arteta go on to the next level and close the gap to the bigger teams? This was not a game, my friends, where Arsenal lost tactically. It was not a game where Arsenal was structurally outplayed. It was a game where Arsenal made fine fan errors up against a team fighting for a Premier League title, baying their blood. Up against world-class players, this should be a lesson to the Arsenal players that if you want to be at that sort of level, you can't make a single error. So get down in below in the comments, let me know your thoughts on Mikel Arteta's tactics, your thoughts on the Arsenal performance, and do you see signs of Arsenal closing the gap to the top top teams, but also improvements that Arsenal need to make. On to the first thing, and that is lack of goal threats. The reason why Arsenal lost this game was summarised perfectly by Mikel Arteta after this game. As he says, from box to box, I thought we were maybe the better team. 
but unfortunately these games are one in the boxes. When it came to transitional threat, tactically in the middle third, the passing, the pressing, Arsenal were excellent in this game and that first half they showed signs of dominance as well. But the zones upon where Arsenal lost this game was in both boxes. Defensively I think Arsenal could do so much better for both goals. I think Cedric Suarez on that first goal as much as Rams was at fault and that second goal was just about making a basic basic clearance and that's where Arsenal I guess lost their heads, lost all sorts of composure and that's where the Arsenal players need to improve mentally. But forget about the defensive third going forward into the final third. Arsenal had so much promise until we got into the box. Both Bukayo Saka and more importantly Gabriel Martinelli were getting the ball in isolation, taking on their fullbacks, opening up space, the cutback was on but there was no strike or goal threat in the middle to capitalise upon the chance. And this was actually summed up perfectly in the second half where Gabriel Martinelli receives the ball at the touch line. He nutmegs Jordan Henderson. This guy has lined up one of the assists of the season. He cuts the ball in the middle and Alexander Lacazette and Martin Odegaard and Bukayo Saka are nowhere to be seen. All three of those players very static and unable to attack this space. And this is what Arthur lacked the most in that final third. We get the ball to the byline, we get the ball into very promising positions and even the stats back here up. In this game, Arthur got the ball into the final third more than Liverpool did. But when we get into that final third, the final pass is on, the striker or the attacking midfielder just can't sniff the goal. And that's why Mikel Arteta is so persistent on signing a brand new centre forward. That's why he wanted Dusan Vlaovic. Vlaovic is a player that excels when it comes to sniffing a chance, sniffing the space, attacking the space and scoring the goals. I'm not going to go over the top on Alexandre Lacazette, I just don't think it's his game, it's not his profile. But this is where Arthur are going to need to address massively in that summer transfer market. If we could sign a striker that adds goal threat to this team and scores the goals, sniffs the chances, Arsenal will give themselves a far, far significantly better chance of winning these games as well. But let me know your own thoughts on the Arsenal attack and do you think that we weren't clinical enough and if we had taken that Martin Odegaard chance where he should have scored and if Alexandre Lacazette had better movement, do you think this could have been a different game? Moving on to the fourth thing that's test of Aaron Ramsdale's character. Listen, I am a massive, massive fan of Aaron Ramsdale. He came into Arsenal and so, so many fans were doubtful. I myself had my own doubts, but ever since he joined Arsenal, he's proved so, so many Arsenal fans wrong and he has saved Arsenal on so, so many occasions. But in this specific game, when the game was at 0-0, on one side you've got Alisson making a top, top, world-class save from Odegaard. On the other hand, Aaron Ramsdale had a pretty, I guess, simple shot on his near post, which he always, always should be saving and he wasn't able to do so. If you want to be a world-class goalkeeper at the biggest of biggest moments, you can't make costly errors like that. Not only does Ramsdale have to have better positioning, but also have far, far stronger hands. But overall, I'm not going to go over the top. But as the stats show, prior to the game, Ramsdale was the third best shot stopper in the league, overall preventing 4.2 goals this season. So having saved us so many times this season, I'm not going to sit here and go over the top on a player that's been so, so important for us, playing out of the back, making great saves, the character he's added. But at the same time, he has now made a mistake and now it's going to be a massive test of the character of Aaron Ramsdale. When Mikel Arteta signed Aaron Ramsdale, it was all about his character. Last year, he got relegated. He continued so many shots and made a couple of mistakes. But what Mikel Arteta saw in Ramsdale was as all players make mistakes, but Ramsdale has shown in the past that he has the ability to bounce back as well. So now it is down to Ramsdale to dust himself down, to learn from his mistake and going into the big games that Arsenal have upcoming. Aston Villa on Saturday, you've got Chelsea away, Tottenham away, Man United at home. In those games when you have fine, fine moments, he needs to learn from this mistake tonight and only get better from it. But what do you guys make of Aaron Ramsdale's performance and do you think he has the ability to bounce back and come back as a better player? Because personally speaking, I have no doubt whatsoever that Ramsdale will only come back stronger and better than ever. Moving on to the fifth and final thing and that's a slip up of 40. A defeat is always, always going to be painful and tonight does hurt. If we had scored first, yes, it could have been a different game, but the final matter was Liverpool took all three points for Arthur. It was a slip up, but they have afforded it. With the form that Arthur have had, the five wins in a row, the nine wins out of 11, that sort of consistency has given Arthur this sort of gap. Where even after that defeat, Arthur still sit in the top for one point clear of Man United and still have two games in hand. So mathematically and logically speaking, this is still all in Arthur's hands. We are still in control of our own destiny. And those massive wins against Wolves away and Wolves at home have almost allowed us this opportunity to lose games and still have the control of the top four race. But talking about the race for the Champions League, alongside Arsenal's defeat to Liverpool, you also had Tottenham Hotspur beating Brighton Hope Albion two goals to nil away from home. But how that leaves the table is Tottenham still sit seventh in the league on 48 points, three points behind fourth place Arsenal with also one game played more. But here are Arsenal's next six games. You've got Aston Villa away, Crystal Palace away, Brighton at home, Southampton away, Chelsea away and Man United at home. These next six games are going to be the deciding games. Saturday 12.30, we've got to dust ourselves down, go again and now it's down to this Arsenal players to show us character, the bounce back character. Yes, we are a point clear. Yes, we have games in hand but we can't rely upon 
condos. We need to take each game as it comes, take as much points as possible, and fulfill our destiny of Champions League football. And looking at the way that Arsenal played tonight, the tactical structure, the toe-to-toe -to -toe football, the fact that Arsenal were able to high press an elite team like Liverpool, tactically Arsenal are most definitely of a Champions League standard. We're a better team overall than Tottenham and Man United, but they have almost these special players like Harry Kane, Hillman Son, and United have Ronaldo, where they can produce some special moments. But overall, what's going to get top four is consistent results, and that's what Arsenal have shown thus far, and hopefully we can continue that. But do you still believe, deep down, that Arsenal can return Champions League football to the Emirates Stadium? But that is the video there and there, and if you have enjoyed, then I guess smash a like on it, and subscribe if you are new. If you would like to follow your boy on them social medias, then the links will be down below in the description. But that was the five things that we learned from Arsenal and Neil Liverpool 2, and Elva Vibes FC is never what you want to see, and it is painful at first, but a massive game on Saturday, Aston Villa away looms, Arsenal is down to you, go there, get the three points, and take control of the destiny. Anyways guys, I'll see you next time, take care, and in a bit.